I'm going to be uh, sharing this morning from the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter. If you have your Bibles there, you can open it up, and I think we'll put some scriptures up on the screen here also. In this chapter, what really stands out to me is uh, the word peace. It's in there several times. Peace is um, an amazing concept in the Bible. It's not, um, it's not the absence of conflict or the absence of war, but it is that you can maintain a calm in the midst of it. And um, I think there's uh, maybe four or five things here in this chapter that he points out that I believe will help us uh, maybe embrace peace. Uh, I think during a time like this, it's easy for some people to become anxious and afraid and fear and all those things. I, I think when it first began, the Lord spoke three things to me. One is, don't fear, no fear. Second is wisdom. You know, there's, this, there's so many voices out there speaking about, you know, what it is, what it isn't, this and that. You know, there's, there's uh, it's kind of hard to kind of put it all together. But you've got to be able to hear the wisdom that comes from heaven. And the only way to do those things is to be close to the Lord. And then the third thing he spoke to me was look for opportunity because in every situation there is opportunity. The Lord is still at work. He, you know, he hasn't stopped even though our world is basically shut down. He hasn't stopped working. So what is the opportunity? And I really loved the, uh, the thing that the Lord shared this morning through Randy about being like a horse at the gate. There's a really neat scripture that says, if you can't keep up with a footman, what are you going to do when the horses start running? You know, And so we're kind of running with the footman right now. So let's, let's do that. So finding peace. How do we do it? Uh, the first scripture I want to share is in Philippians 4, verse 2. You know, put that up on the screen here, Nate. Um, I plead with you, Euodia, and I plead with Sintichi to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women, since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. So first thing we can do to get peace in our life is avoid drama. You know, we have, we have people, maybe you're one of them, who live in a constant state of drama. There's always drama, something going on. And if it's not happening, we have a good way of making it happen. You know what I mean? We just like to stir it up. It's like our life is not happy unless there's some kind of drama going on. Well, Paul's writing to these two women, you know, Euodia and Sintichi, or I'm not sure how to pronounce that in the Greek, obviously, but he says, be of the same mind in the Lord. You know, there was something going on there with these two women, and Paul's saying, hey, it's, it's a distraction. You know, why, why live this way? He said, be of the same mind in the Lord. And, and, and the way you get away from drama is both of you putting your focus on the Lord. Be of the same mind in the Lord. And he reminds them, we're on the same team here. You know, he says there, help these women because they, they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel. You know, why would we be in contention with one another or be in conflict or look for drama when, in fact, we're all, we're all part of the same team. We're all working for the same thing, which is to spread the kingdom of God and the good news of Jesus Christ. And he also mentions these women, their names are written in the book of life. You know, the, the people, especially if you're constantly struggling with people who are Christians, don't you know that you're going to be with them in heaven forever? And maybe the Lord will build you a mansion right beside theirs, and you have to spend eternity looking at that person. So, I just want you to know that drama causes unrest in your heart. And you just get frustrated, you get all worked up, you get an anxiety. If you want to have peace, avoid that drama. Ask the Lord to give you a vision of seeing that person that you have pr trouble with as part of the same team, as laboring together for the spread of the kingdom 
and that one day you'll be with them in heaven. So avoid drama. Second thing is uh, found in verse 4. It says, uh, rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say it again, rejoice. Um, you know, the second thing about having peace in your life is be cheerful. I mean, there's, there's uh, again, some people, I don't know who they are. I'm not pointing any fingers, but we're just negative nannies. So all we can do is be negative, negative, negative. Even if something good's going on, <laughs> You gotta, you gotta find something negative about it, you know? And then, and then of course, when something like this happens, you're really, really negative because you're negative when you're going to Cedar Point. You know, you're negative when, when the Browns win the Super Bowl. But there's this, there's this idea in the Bible about being cheerful. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And uh, I think it's important for us to find find something of the Lord that we can be cheerful about. It's a, that's what the word rejoice means. It means to be cheerful. And I don't mean, you know, putting on a fake smile, like you get up in the morning and you try to force this smile on your face, like, oh, I'm cheerful, I'm cheerful. But really, ask the Lord, you know, Lord, put something in my heart that I can be just a cheerful person. I can see the goodness of the Lord. David said, I, I rejoice and I can see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Do you see the goodness of the Lord or do you just see doom and gloom? Do you have something to be cheerful about? I mean, look at Paul the Apostle and Silas. They were in, in prison and uh, beaten. You know, their backs laid wide open, but they're in there praising God. There's always something to be cheerful about. And I'm telling you, if you're, if you're the negative nanny, uh, you will be the person that people don't even want to be around because it's kind of like a drag on them. If you want to have peace in your life, be cheerful. This, the scripture in Proverbs 17, 22, which I also had on, on that screen, it says, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. You need some medicine today. And it's uh, a cheerful heart does that. A crushed spirit, on the other hand, drives the bones. So if you find yourself without peace, your spirit's crushed, you feel depressed, pushed down, ask God to make you a cheerful person. The next thing is found in verse 6. It says, uh, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation or in everything, let your request be known to God with thanksgiving. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So don't be anxious about anything. Anything. That puts, that puts everything in that category. Don't be anxious about anything. But in every situation, I like, I like these words, anything and every situation, anything and everything, anything, everything. Don't be anxious about anything. If you find yourself anxious, then his answer is pray. That's what he says. Don't be anxious, but in every situation through prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Remember, that's that cheerful heart. Prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. I mean, there are, there are times that only God can help us. And rather than wringing our hands in anxiousness and worry, we come to the Lord and we say, Lord, I present my petition to you. And it says the result of that is that the peace of God, not just peace, but the peace of God, the peace of God, like Jesus sleeping in that boat, the peace of God which transcends our understanding. I mean, it's, it's a peace that's so great, it goes beyond our human understanding. It boggles our mind. How can I have peace like this? The peace of God, which transcends understanding, it says, will guard your heart and your mind. It's like a guard. It's like it, it watches. It keeps things away. You need your heart and your mind guarded by the peace of God. And it comes through prayer. So if you find yourself anxious, 
Don't be anxious. Pray instead. Replace the anxiety with prayer, and his peace will be there. The third thing is, it's found in verse 8. I'm going to put this slide up, mate. Verse 8. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. So fourth thing I wanted to say to you is, what are you thinking about? Because what we think about can either bring anxiety or bring peace. He tells us if we think about these, these types of things, that the God of peace will be with us. You may find through the day you're thinking about everything negative or, oh, oh what's going to happen? The economy is going to fall apart or, or, oh, my goodness, look at this. I've never been in a situation like this. What's happening to our world? You can, you can just let these things mull over and over and over in your mind and lose your peace. These things we will have the peace of God. Um, so what is it you're thinking about? What's the things that you're mulling over in your head? He tells us to think about things that are true, things that are in the open, that are not hidden, things that are honest, or the Greek word is honorable. Things that are pure, innocent, clean. Things that are lovely. Uh, things of good report things of excellence or virtue, and things that are praiseworthy or commendable. So guard your thoughts. Allow, allow the Lord to challenge you when you're sitting down through the day and frustrated about things or you're, you're starting to find yourself spinning down into negative things. Go back to Philippians 4.8 and say, Lord, let me think about these kind of things. Because if you do, he says, the God of peace will be with you. And then finally, verse 11, 11 uh, says, I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. When I see that word learned, it sounds to me like it's something that I have to experience. It's a learning. It's a process. There's something that's going on in my life. I have learned to be content. Content is a little bit different than peace, but it leads to peace. If you're living a life of constant discontent, there's not going to be much peace there. But if you learn to be content, peace can follow. And here, here's what he says. What is, you know, what is this secret of content? He calls it a secret of contentment. Listen to what he says. I know what it is to be in need. That's part of that learning, part of the experience. I know what it is to have needs in my life, is what he's saying. And I know what it is to have plenty. There, was, there were times in Paul's life where he experienced very little. Other times he experienced plenty. He says, I've learned this. But either way, whether I have little or whether I have plenty, I've learned to settle in my heart, to be content, to let it rest here. I have learned the secret of being content in any, any and every situation, whether I'm well-fed or hungry. See, we might think, well, if I'm well-fed, I'm very content, but if I'm hungry, I'm discontent. No, he says you have to learn to be content in both, well-fed or hungry, lacking or plenty. Either way, we just want to be content in the Lord. Whether living in plenty or in want. And then he, he gives this most, one of these most famous scriptures everybody preaches and talks about. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. 
And we use it for all kinds of things, like I want to climb Mount Everest. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, you know, or whatever. But listen, he's saying all this strength that we have in Christ is to help us with contentment when we have lack, when we have little, when we uh, don't have what we want. That's what this strength of Christ is for. And so you can, you can come to the Lord and say, Lord, you know, I can do all things through you. And even though this may be a time of lack or this may be a time where I don't have as much, this may be the time where I'm being tempted to be discontent, I can go through this with you. I can do all things. So all of you charismatics out there who like to quote, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, do it now. Do it now when, you're, when you need to. You know, do it now when you feel frustrated. Do it now when you feel discontent or you feel hurt or you feel afraid. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because that is the true context of that verse. And I love this chapter because it just it speaks to uh, this whole issue of peace, worry, discontent. And so what are the five ways? First, get rid of the drama in your life. You know, if you're here today and you, you find yourself constantly stirring up these issues with people, always involved in drama, ask the Lord to change that about you. Be a person who's a peacemaker, not one who's always stirring up division or discontent. Second thing is be cheerful. If you're a negative person, you wonder why you don't have any friends? Well, be cheerful. And you might find yourself people wanting to be around you because when you're there, they get lifted up. On the other hand, if you're the negative person, I don't want to go spend any time with you because I'm going to leave bummed out. <laughs> you know, so be cheerful. There's a lot to be thankful for. Third is don't be anxious. You know, if you find that's happening, the answer he gives us is prayer. The fourth. Guard what your thoughts are. What are you thinking about? You know, what are you spending time thinking about? He says, if you'll think about these kinds of things, you'll have peace. And then finally, uh, be content. Learn to be content. Contentment doesn't mean you're giving up. Doesn't mean you continue to strive to make things better. But whatever the situation you're in, be content. Learn the secret. It's called a secret of being content because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Isn't that good? It's a great chapter, and I believe it's something that can help us all during this time.